Today we are on chapter seven, number 19. Bahunam, Jamanam, Ante, Jivanam, Jivavan, Mam, Prapayate, Vasudeva, Sarvam, Iti, Sa, Mahatma, Su, Durlapa. After many births and deaths, he who is actually in knowledge surrenders unto me, knowing me to be the cause of all causes and all that is. Such a great soul is very rare. The living entity, while executing devotional service or transcendental rituals after many, many births, may actually become situated in transcendental pure knowledge that the Supreme, Persona Supreme Personality of Godhead is the ultimate goal of spiritual realization. In the beginning of spiritual realization, while one is trying to give up one's attachment to materialism, there is some leaning toward impersonalism. But when one is further advanced, he can understand that there are activities in the spiritual life and that these activities constitute devotional service. Realizing this, he becomes attached to the Supreme Personality of Godhead and surrenders to him. At such a time, one can understand that Lord Sri Krishna's mercy is everything and that he is cause of all causes and that this material manifestation is not independent from him. He realizes the material world to be a perverted reflection of spiritual vergaratedness and realizes that in everything there is a relationship with the Supreme Lord Krishna. Thus, he thinks of everything in relation to Vasudeva or Sri Krishna. Such a universal vision of Vasudeva precipitates one's full surrender to the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna as the highest goal. Such surrendered great souls are very rare. This verse is very nicely explained in the third chapter of Sveta Savartara Upanishad. In this body, there are powers of speaking, of seeing, of hearing, of mental activities, etc. But there are not but these are not important if not related to Supreme Lord. And because Vasudeva is all pervading and everything is Vasudeva, the devotee surrenders in full knowledge. Text 20. Kames tas tar hartarjana prapadante niya devata tam tam niyamam asayaya prateya nayata savaya. Those whose minds are distorted by material desires surrender unto demigods and follow the particular rules and regulations of worship according to their own natures. Those who are freed from all material contamination surrender unto the Supreme Lord and engage in his devotional service. As long as the material contamination is not completely washed off, they are by nature non-devotees. But even those who have material desires and who resort to the Supreme Lord are not so much attracted by external nature. Because of approaching the right goal, they soon become free from all material lust. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, it is recommended that whether one is free from all material desires or full of material desires or desires liberation from material contamination or is a pure devotee and has no desire for material sense gratification, you should in all cases surrender to Vasudeva and worship him. It is said in the Bhagavatam that less intelligent people who have lost their spiritual sense take shelter of demigods for immediate fulfillment of material desires. Generally, such people do not go to the Supreme Personality of Godhead because they are in particular modes of nature, ignorance and passion, and therefore worship various demigods. Following the rules and regulations of worship, they are satisfied. The worshipers of demigods are motivated by small desires and do not know how to reach the supreme goal, but a devotee of the Supreme Lord is not misguided because in Vedic literature, there are recommendations 
for worshiping different gods for different purposes. Example, a diseased man is recommended to worship the sun. Those who are not devotees of the Lord think that for certain purposes, demigods are better than the Supreme Lord. But a pure devotee knows that the Supreme Lord Krishna is the master of all. In the Chitana Karat Maratha, it is said that the only it is said that only the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna is master and all others are servants. Therefore, a pure devotee never goes to demigods for satisfaction of his material needs. He depends on the Supreme Lord. And the pure devotee is satisfied with whatever he gives. Sloka 21. Oops. Yo yo yam yam tanam bhakta shridhaya sittam hichati tasaya tasaya kalam shridam tam eva vida hanam ayam. I am in everyone's heart as the super soul. As soon as one desires to worship the demigods, I make his faith steady so that he can devote himself to some particular deity. God has given independence to everyone. Therefore, if a person desires to have material enjoyment and wants very sincerely to have such faculties from the material demigods, the Supreme Lord as super soul in everyone's heart understands and gives faculties to such persons, facilities, faculties to such persons. As the Supreme Father of all living entities, he does not interfere with, the in, with their independence, but gives all faculty, am I reading this right? But gives all faculties or facilities, but gives all- Facilities, facilities. facilities. Yeah, that's, I think I'm not reading this right. But gives all facilities so that they can get, they can fulfill their material desires. Some may ask why the all powerful God gives facilities to the living entities for enjoying this material world and so lets them fall into the trap of the illusionary energy. The answer is that if the Supreme Lord is as super soul does not give such facilities, then there is no meaning to independence. Therefore, he gives everyone full independence, whatever one likes, but his ultimate instruction we find in this in the Bhagavad Gita Man should give up all other engagements and fully surrender unto him. That will make him happy. That will make man happy. Both the living entity and the demigods are subordinate to the will of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, the living entity cannot worship the demigod by his own desire, nor can the demigod bestow any benediction without the Supreme will. As it is said, not a blade of grass moves without the will of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Generally, persons who are distressed in the material world go to the demigods as they are advised in the Vedic literature. A person wanting some particular thing may worship such and such a demigod. For example, a diseased person is recommended to worship the sun god. A person wanting education may worship the goddess of learning. Sarasvati, and a person wanting a beautiful wife may worship the goddess Uma, the wife of Lord Shiva. In this way, there are recommendations in the Sastras, Vedic scriptures, for different modes of worship of different demigods. And because a particular living entity wants to enjoy a particular material facility, the Lord inspires him with such, with a strong desire to achieve that benediction from that particular demigod. And so he successfully receives the benediction. The particular mode of the devotional attitude of the living entity toward a particular type of demigod is also arranged by the Supreme Lord. The demigods cannot infuse the living entity entities with such an infinity, but because he is the Supreme Lord or the super soul who is present in the heart of all living entities, Krishna gives impetus to the man, to man to worship certain demigods. The demigods are actually different parts of the universal body of the Supreme Lord. Therefore, they have no independence. In the Vedic literature, Tatriya Upanishad, first Anuvaka, it is stated, the Supreme Personality of Godhead as Super Soul is also present within the heart of the demigod. Therefore, he arranges through the demigod to fulfill the desire of the living entity. But both the demigod and the living entity are dependent on the Supreme Will. They are not independent. Sloka 22. Sa Taya Shridaya Yuktas 
Tash Yara Donam, I hate. Labat hate, Cha Tata Kaman, Mayava Vi Hitin Haitan. Endowed with such a faith, he seeks favors of a particular demigod and obtains his own desires. But in actuality, these benefits are bestowed by me alone. The demigods cannot award benediction to the devotees without the permission of the Supreme Lord. The living entity may not forget that everything in the, pro pro in the property of the Supreme Lord, but the demigods do not forget. So the worship of demigods and the achieve and achievement of desired results are not due to the demigods, but to the Supreme Personality of Godhead by arrangement. The less intelligent living entity does not know this and therefore he foolishly goes to the demigods for some benefit. But the pure devotee, when in need of something, prays only to the Supreme Lord. Asking for material benefit, however, is not a sign of a pure devotee. A living entity goes to the demigods usually because he is mad to fulfill his lust. This happens when something undue is desired by the living entity and the Lord himself does not fulfill the desire. In the Chitana Karat Murta, it is said that one who worships the Supreme Lord and at the same time desires material enjoyment is contradictory in his desires. Devotional service of the Supreme Lord and the worship of a demigod cannot be on the same platform because worship of a demigod is material and devotional service to the Supreme Lord is completely spiritual. For the living entity who desires to return to Godhead, material desires are impediments. A pure devotee of the Lord is therefore not awarded the material benefits desired by less intelligent living entities who prefer to worship demigods of the material world rather than engaged in devotional service of the Supreme Lord. Text 23. Atavat tu falam tasam tad bhavatve alpha med hasam tavan deva yajo yanti mad bukta yanti mam apai. Men of small intelligence worship the demigods and their fruits are limited and temporary. Those who worship the demigods go to the planets of the demigods, but my devotees ultimately reach my supreme planet. Some commentators on the Gita say that one who worships a demigod can reach the supreme lord, but here it clearly, it is clearly stated that the worshippers of demigods go to different planetary systems where various demigods are situated, just as the worshipper of the sun achieves the sun or a worshipper of the demigod of the moon achieves the moon. Similarly, if anyone wants to worship a demigod like Indra, he can attain that particular god's planet. It is not that everyone, regardless of whatever demigod is worshipped, will reach the supreme personality of Godhead. That is denied here, for it is clearly stated that the worshippers of demigods go to different planets in the material world, but the devotee of the supreme lord goes directly to the supreme planet of the personality of Godhead. Here is the point where here the point may be raised that if the demigods are different parts of the body of the Supreme Lord, then the same end should be achieved by worshiping them. However, worshipers of the demigods are less intelligent because they don't know to what part of the body food must be supplied. Some of them are so foolish that they claim that there are many parts and many ways to supply food. This isn't very sanguine. Can anyone supply food to the body through the ears or eyes? They do not know that these demigods are different parts of the universal body of the Supreme Lord. And in their ignorance, they believe that each and every demigod is a separate God and a competitor of the Supreme Lord. Not only are demigods parts of the Supreme Lord, but ordinary living entities are also. In the Srimad Bhavagatam, it is stated that Brahmanas are the head of the Supreme Lord and Kshatriyas are the arms, etc., and that all serve different functions. Regardless of the situation, if one knows that both demigods and himself are part and parcel of the Supreme Lord, his knowledge is perfect. But if he does not understand this, he achieves different planets where the demigods reside. This is not the same destination the, the devotees reach. The results achieved by demigods benedictions are perishable because within this material world, the planets, the demigods and their worshipers are all perishable. 
Therefore, it is clearly stated in this verse that all results achieved by worshiping demigods are perishable, and therefore such worship is performed by the less intelligent living entity. Because the pure devotee engaged in Krishna consciousness in devotional service of the Supreme Lord achieves eternal bliss, exists blissful existence that is full of knowledge, his achievements and those of the common worshiper of the demigods are different. The Supreme Lord is unlimited. His favor is unlimited. His mercy is unlimited. Therefore, the mercy of the Supreme Lord upon his pure devotees is unlimited. I'll stop here at 24. This made me think a lot about religious Catholic people in my life that pray to, I don't know all the saints, but they'll be like, oh, I'm praying to Saint whoever because I lost something or I'm praying to Saint something because somebody's health is sick or praying to this saint because whatever is going on. They know all like the Saint things. I guess it's like that equivalent. Like why not just pray to the one one the one person, which is everything, instead of it being a person, just one like bigger bubble, which is something I can start to grasp now. It's like everything's the same. It does sound similar. I, I, I agree. I don't, I wasn't raised that, so I don't know why it's taught that way, to do it that way. I don't, you know, I wasn't a very, I most definitely was not a very strong Catholic. And uh, as I said before, didn't pay attention in, you know, in religious instruction and that kind of thing. But <clears throat> I think it's, it's, it's more, it, the presentation is the same, you know, God or, you know, God, which is comprised of the Holy Father, Jesus Christ and, and the spirit. Um, are like Krishna. They're all, you know, they give everything, they are everything, they, you know, but not everything is that. And, and you, are, you are saved or you are holy when you practice devotional service to this, you know, this triad, you know. And it was it was almost more a cultural or or a, not I don't uh, I can't think of the right word, but it, it was definitely if you were praying to this there's a saint who finds lost things you know and then and then there's a saint who helps animals you know and so on and so forth you know if you were directing your prayers towards them, it was understood you weren't praying to God. Um, it, was, it was understood that you were looking for a particular favor and it was understood that St. Francis, for example, I mean, I would, I'll probably be struck down, but it was understood that he was on a level of demigod. You know, he, he, he lived a particularly interesting life and ended up you know, what Krishna would say as a devotional, you know, um, um, server of Krishna. And so he lived that kind of life. Um, but if you were looking to St. Francis for some help, it was understood you weren't, you know, that you weren't praying to God. Yeah. But if you really, you know, understood, it was also understood that anything St. Francis to do came through God. So it's, it was very similar to this, you know. Yeah, that's what I was thinking while I was reading it. Yeah. As that so is. I'm saying all this, but I want to just remind people, I don't really understand because I, because yeah, no. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know why they did it that way. But I remember people doing it that way. Well, some of it, you know, back in in um, 
after the church was formed and, and then saints started happening. So these were people who were, who were very often martyrs. And then some of this came from, they were martyrs. So they were, you know, they clearly, they were giving up one of the hardest things you can give up in your life, you know, um, for their beliefs. And then people used to look for things that they had touched or held or their bones or some remnants of them. And those were considered, you know, they're, they're material things and everybody knew it, but those were considered very holy and still are to this day, you know. And so I think some of the, the kind of mystical worship of, of the saints, you know, stemmed out of that, but I don't know. Yeah, when I went to the Vatican and they had all those mummified, I don't know what their titles were, cardinals, yeah. bishops, whatever. I was like, this, this is, I, why, that to me was too personified and too materialistic that these people, I get why they do it, but to me, that's not, that's this, what I'm starting to learn now in this bhakti yoga, where it's a, an energy and not a person, where I don't have to go worship a body of a saintly figure. I don't know what these people were, but it's the same idea of like when my sister passed away and she's she was buried. So she has a, a gravestone out somewhere in, um, I don't remember the town. It's like out East, like Holbrook or something. And Holt, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, Patchogue, I think actually. And I didn't really like, I didn't, feel like I needed to go there to feel her. Like I felt like I could visit her anywhere. Like I could be sitting here and feel her. Like I didn't need to go there. That's not where she was anymore. So like when people are going to visit these bodies that were like mummified, it's just like, it's like defeating the purpose. No, I think, but I think you kind of hit on it. It's when you know somebody who is particularly saint-like or particular, you know, who, who is, and everybody meets somebody like this, you know, um, who somehow seems to grasp how to live in a way that's, uh, that's uh, how to live a good life. And you are looking at this person and, and thinking, you know, I, I, I want to emulate this person because of how they're living, you know, and it's, it's not worshiping that person, but it is, it is more, how did they get to that level? Here I am. And how did they get all the way there? And I think when that person dies, it's it's not, to me, it's perfectly understandable why you want to retain something of that person to remind yourself of that person. It's it's like a trinket. Um, a trinket is such a dismissive word though. It's so it doesn't yeah. carry the weight. But it's it's like something that reminds you of that person that brings them back. I mean, I agree with you, some people like you, you don't need the thing in your pocket or around your neck or whatever, but for some people it's, it's, it's very um, comforting. Yeah, and I'm not using the word worship, right? I'm using it in my way before I learned how to use it in this way. So I don't know if worship's the right word. I didn't mean that because the way they talk about worship here is a more level word I meant like I don't know I don't know I'll figure it out instead of figuring out what other people are doing I'm gonna stay focused on what I'm doing <laughs> yeah I think that's gonna help me all right every day I'm learning more and more Focus on myself. That'll be my mantra for today. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's do some breath and then we'll meditate. Sitting up nice and tall, breathing in through the nose, out through the nose, creating a long breath in, deep breath out, relaxing the face and shoulders, setting up for our alternate nostril breath. 
Bring your right hand over to your face, closing the right nostril with the thumb. Inhale through the left. Close left, exhale right. Inhale right. Close right, exhale left. Inhale left. Close left, exhale right. Inhale right. Close right, exhale left. Continuing on your own breath, adding lots and retention if it's in your practice. You'll finish up whatever round you're on, exhaling out the left side. If you wanna join me for bumblebee breath, otherwise you can stay where you are. If you're joining me for bumblebee breath, you'll take the uh, thumbs to close off the ears and the peace fingers to close off the eyes. Inhale and exhale with the lips sealed, creating a humming sound with the exhale. You'll sound like a bumblebee and you'll feel vibrations in the body. Taking a deep breath in. set the timer for 20 minutes you'll join us when you're ready with setting up yourself for your meditation intention whatever practice you want to work on today
Bringing your hands to your heart center. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste.